What's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to take you on another tour like I did last in the last video as well. And we start at Breco Manor. Uh, Breco Manor uh, is a manor just uh, down the road here. I'm going to show you that later. And the, this place is famous for the German gun batteries which were uh, in the hatch road just right behind me. You can see over there. There were four uh, German 105mm cannons uh, positioned uh, in the hedgerow, aimed at Utah Beach, and they had to be taken care of before the landing started. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the monument here, and then I will drive to, um, to Breco Meadow itself to show there a uh, little bit around, and I'm going to show you where the gun positions were. As you can see, this is the monument. Beautifully taken care of. And right here. There is a stone story of what happened around here written on here's a little uh, it's kind of hard to see but uh, a drawing which uh, Richard Winter, uh, Winters made also known as Dick Winters commander of Easy Company so I'm gonna show you where the gun positions were. So right, right here is the actual Breco Manor. As you can see, very old building. It's a little farm over here. And uh, right now we walk a little up the road and then I can show you the exact places where the gun positions were. So here we are. As you can see, it's a private property so I'm not gonna enter. But in this hedge road, right over there, there were four, uh, four 105 millimeter German cannons aimed at Utah Beach. And they were to uh, put uh, D-Day to a halt. And what happened here was that on the morning of say, the 6th of June, uh, Lieutenant Dick Winters got uh, some uh, orders uh, to take over these guns. He didn't know what to expect. He got a 12 man and they came from a little village which would be right over there behind the uh, trees called Le Grand Chemin and they were to take these uh, gun positions um, so yeah that happened there was an entire uh, German company right here and this was just a perfect example of uh, yeah what is called all unit uh, taxi, uh, tactics excuse me so, uh, the guns were uh, taken, uh, uh, taken care of, we put uh, TNT in the barrel, lighted up with uh, German stick grenades and they uh, had to retreat afterwards because there was a German machine gun in the Breco Manor itself which started firing at uh, the man of e 12 man of uh, Easy Company. Uh, they retreated. Afterwards, the German machine gun was taken care of as well. And because these guns were taken care of, the uh, Allied forces uh, could land safely on the beaches. Still to this day, this is a perfect example of how to take care of um, larger forces using uh, small uh, groups. 
and it's still being told at the uh, military academy in the United States. So, this was a little uh, story about Brico Manor. Now I'm gonna take you to the church of Angoville, where I will tell you something about what happened over there. Let's go. So right next to me, there is the little church of uh, Angoville au Plain, which was used during the war for uh, as a as an aid station. Uh, Kenneth Moore and Kenneth Wright um, took the task of uh, helping injured uh, soldiers, uh, not just American but also German soldiers. And in the church, they helped about 80 people. Um, sadly, some lost their lives there, but uh, also many others were helped. It was not just soldiers who got uh, aid there, also, it is also known that uh, one kid was helped there as well. I'm going to show you around inside the church, I'm going to show you the monument and pay more respect. As you can see here, there's a monument. And right here we have the church. Let's go look inside. So this is the first view when entering the church. And right on the left. It's kind of hard to see actually. It's better. There's a window made as a tribute for the paratroopers. And somewhere around here. Oh yes, here. This window is made for the 501st Airborne Division containing Robert Wright, kind of more as you can see. Right over here there's some more. This says uh, the return of the heroes of Angerville au Plain, as far as my French goes. So what is interesting about this church, it's just not just that it was made uh, as an aid station, but also right here, let's see, and right here. here these are still blood stains of uh, soldiers who were laying on the bench and also this uh, church didn't came out of the war unharmed because right over there there as you can see um, shells, uh, at least one shell, came through the uh, roof of the church. Very interesting place as well. story about uh, what happened around here also a little story about uh, 
the two medics in charge of the, today and a little picture of uh, that village uh, in June 1944 nowadays this is a really small uh, village it only contains about uh, 48 people I think um, but uh, during the war of course this also was a very uh, important uh, place especially uh, due to what happened uh, right behind me in the church here so every time when I come to Normandy I uh, have to visit this place as well so this uh, was the part of uh, Angerville au Plain now I'm gonna take you to uh, Quarantaine show you the street where the 506 and 502nd uh, entered Quarantaine and I'm gonna show you the 506th um, aid station there let's go okay welcome to Quarantaine right now we're uh, at one of the two uh, roads where the 506 and the 502nd uh, entered Quarantaine to uh, conquer the village I'm gonna show you a little bit of uh, that this is one of two roads, the other one is just on this side behind me, fed next to me. And right here, there's a little uh, bar, right there. Um, which I think in the series Band of Brothers, um, the German machine gun was uh, based on. I'm not quite sure about that, but uh, since it's... Uh, for one of the first things you see when you walk down or drive down this road could be a possibility so in current town was a quite fierce battle between the Fallschirmjägers of the 6th Fallschirmjägers and the Airborne the 101st Airborne and after a few days they managed to capture Quarantaine which eventually uh, was necessary to link up with the other forces uh, coming from Omaha Beach. So that would have been the main road to enter uh, Quarantaine. And this goes uh, first you have to nowadays first you have to cross the railway I'm not quite sure if there was uh, the same deal uh, 77 years ago but if you would continue this road you um, cross the railway as well eventually you would come to the I think it's called the Place de Public where the um, uh, which you all can, uh, also can see in uh, Band of Brothers. There was also uh, quite a big fight. And afterwards, there were some ceremonies going on. And there was an eight year old girl who gave uh, flowers to. Uh, I can't remember who it was. She, uh, she gave flowers to uh, some officer. And that was the last thing she did when she was alive. Because straight after that there was a um, shelling from a German 88 firing on the parade ground, wounding several people, killing several. Uh, a very sad uh, thing during ceremony, of course. Okay. Right here. If you have already checked out my Instagram, there is the old aid station of the 506. And uh, also in Bernard Brothers, you can see uh, Dick Winters getting uh, wounded on the in his leg because of a ricochet and uh, Albert Blythe suffering from hysterical blindness and this building is probably the place where they uh, would have been um, uh, patched up and helped there is also uh, an aid station of the 502nd just uh, way back over there somewhere not gonna visit that but uh, yeah there were multiple uh, aid stations and 
now just gonna walk back to the car so yeah um, with that I'm gonna end this video thank you for watching if you liked it please leave a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time